Hey, this is uh, David Nash, and uh, coming to you here on uh, Google Plus. First time that we've actually done a hangout, and I'm a little bit sick. I've uh, uh, got some sinus stuff going on, a little bit of throwing up, a little bit of uh, stuffed up nose. So if I have to run off, you know, that's that's what that is. But anyway. Uh, we're doing this to talk about the Doomsday Prepper episode, and hopefully we'll have some people joining. Uh, I think David Mays from the same episode as, as I am is going to uh, to come in and, and, and come back a little later, maybe. At least we've talked about it. Uh, so uh, basically, I'm just a couple minutes early, but I wanted to make sure everything was working. Um, so... It's just, I guess, talk a little bit about uh, Doomsday Prepper episode, how how I came about to do it, and you know how everything works. So, uh, some of you, I guess, know that I do YouTube videos and I have a blog, the TNGun.com website. Been prepping for a long time, and uh, always, always am doing projects, always looking for new projects to do, but. Uh, so what had happened was I was working on uh, building a, a bug out location, right? I wanted to build a classroom, uh, what would eventually be a classroom, but would start out as a storage building for all my equipment because we're, we're building our gun range, our, our homestead where we're going to move to when I retire is about an hour and a half away from where I live. And uh, living, driving a cube, it's kind of hard to pack all the tools to work, all the materials to work, and camping equipment to go out to the woods. So uh, rather than traveling stuff back and forth, I wanted to build some sort of, of storage building. However, you know, if you've got raw land out in the middle of nowhere and you start putting uh, uh, equipment out there, valuable equipment out there, it can disappear, as Subtac found out. You know, he did the Doomsday uh, Prepper episode where he built the treehouse with the Bylar covering. And then, what, two, three weeks after his show aired, somebody came down and stole several thousand dollars worth of his stuff. And, uh, you know, we can't afford that. I don't think he could afford that. And, and even if you can, I mean, that's, that's horrible. So we were trying to figure out what sort of building would give us the most secure storage for the least amount of money. And since I was doing some research in barrel cement, uh, figured we'd do a geodesic dome. Uh, knowing that nothing is going to be truly impenetrable, especially if you're not there, but, uh, you know, uh, the harder we make it to break in, the, the less uh, likely somebody is just to come in and be light-fingered and, and take stuff. So we're, we were with the process of researching how to build this ferro cement dome, talking to uh, uh, Nolan from motorsprayer.com. You saw that sprayer we used to shoot the cement. That uh, that came from them, and we couldn't have got the building built without without that uh, that sprayer. So I talked to him about ferro cement, talked to uh, a gentleman from uh, Kelcrete who makes a cement additive that was really also invaluable because, as you could tell from watching the episode, I don't know a lot about cement, mixing cement. That was actually when I put that bag in there, the thing was moving and it was spinning around. That was actually the very first time I had ever actually turned that thing on other than when we put it together from the box from Harbor Freight. So, and, and I don't know how to mix cement, right? And I've got several friends at work that are masons, lifelong masons, and, uh, you know, they've been making fun of me for the past two months now. But, uh, uh, anyway, so, Doomsday Preppers called, uh, and they said, uh, hold on just a second, I got a question. Yeah, Eric, uh, Eric Jobs just uh, uh, sent me a message. He said, are we still doing the Hangout? I thought I was doing it now. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, Eric, if you're seeing this, you know, chime in. Uh, So, but anyway, um, so they, they called and they said, you know, we, we're one episode short, 
season starts in a couple of weeks, would you mind coming up board? And, and, and frankly, I don't watch Doomsday Preppers very much. Uh, and if you Google my name on Doomsday Preppers, what you'll see is is a bunch of uh, articles and, and rebuttals from a post from emergencymanagement.com where they said that Doomsday Preppers are socially selfish. And, and I don't like that whole idea that people come out and they say, you know, preppers are selfish and doomsday preppers, you know, crazy or whatever. Because if you look at the show, a lot of these guys, you know, th what they actually do for a living or what they actually do or how they actually are is, is sometimes taken a little bit out of context. And, uh, uh, you know, most of us are, are, are pretty uh, serious about doing what we do, about protecting our... Uh, Yeah, I believe it. Is. I think it is. I just got a question. Yeah, it says Google Hangouts on my on my uh, thing. It shows that you're on here. You should be able to to pop up. It's some. It's somehow. I really don't know how this works. To tell you the truth, I've never done it before. Um, I don't know. So anyway, um, I'm sorry. I practiced this, but I didn't really practice it with other people, so I don't know how to add people down at the bottom um, so people could talk. Um, but anyway, so... Uh, they called, they said, you want to do the show? I said, sure, but I don't really watch Doomsday Preppers much, and I'm afraid that you make preppers pejorative, and I don't want to do anything that makes preppers pejorative, you know, that says that we're crazy. I said, you know, I don't want to get on there and look stupid. I want to show projects. And they said, okay, we'll do projects. So they wanted to see what I was working on. I said, I'm, I'm working on this event. No, we talked about it. They said, let's do it. So that was what the focus of the show was supposed to be. And we did a couple extra projects. That uh, chlorine producing unit is something that I have been doing. I've done several times um, because you know the ability to purify water is is of utmost importance. And uh, you know the steam engine is something that uh, I've been working on messing around with. Um, it's not the most efficient thing in the world, but uh, it is something that that everybody's probably got a spare tore up. Uh, uh, yeah, there's some way to do that. I just don't know how to add people. There we go. Let's let's try this. Let's try. How's that? Oh. Um. Let's try that. I think that might have done it. How's that, Eric? Uh, I sent you. I sent you a uh, invite. I think that might get you to pop up. And if that works, let me try David to.
David, I think you've got to uh, get in the... Let's see, let's try that one more time. Enhanced. See if that'll work. Did that work, David? So anyway, um, I invited you. I, I think you'll be able to pop on now. Um, but anyway, um, so they were called. They wanted to know about the dome. Um, wasn't really planning on building it within the next six months. I was going to do it the next summer. Um, but uh, uh, star up a video party. How do you star up a video party? Yeah, Eric, I have invited you several times, and I keep typing in David Mays, and there's a couple on there, but none of them have the same picture. And I've added you to circles to see if I could invite you that way. Okay, so um, I wasn't really ready to build the dome. They called. They uh, uh, wanted to come in like the next week, so I took off work. I had a really, I've got a really great boss. He let me take some time off, and uh, we started trucking stuff down to the land. We've got, uh, we had uh, 40 hundred pound bags of Portland cement, and the rest of that 14 tons of, of cement they were talking about. The rest of that was sand, so we had a truckload of sand come in. Um, those uh, metal pipes, the conduit pipes, that was 35 10 foot metal conduit pipes. We have a couple of YouTube videos talking about how we did that. It was about $120 worth of pipe, another $30 or so in, in nuts and bolts. The tarp was like $20, uh, and then the rest of that was was, was fencing. Um, it took my wife and I, it took me about 8 hours, 10 hours or so to cut and smash all the pipes together. Um, and then the wife and I went out in our front yard and put the dome together it took us about an hour and a half, which neither one of us had done it before. And, uh, you know, my wife, she's, she's really great at a lot of stuff, but when I say hand me a screwdriver, I get an adjustable wrench. So um, not the most handy. But the two of us, it only took us about an hour and a half to build. Uh, but when we got out to the land, they said we had three days to film. Uh, but it took us all day to build the dome because they kept wanting to reshoot and do things from different angles. So instead of having an uh, uh, hour and a half to build the dome and the rest of the time to do the cement, basically we had one day to build the dome, and uh, the next day was was put all the, the wrapping on. And then uh, uh, we told them, we said, if you want to get done, you're, you're going to have to leave and let us do the cement. So the only 
and video that they had of us doing the cement was that first me attempt to do the cement mixer. I never used a cement mix before. I didn't even know you had to turn the things off before you dump the stuff in. So, so I tore it all. I messed all that up. But uh, Dad was quick to tell me how to how to how to do that better. So um, we did that. And then uh, um, I guess while they were while they were gone that Thursday, they went over to David's house in Jackson and, and filmed some of his stuff. I don't know when they filmed the rest of it, but they were over with us for about 50 hours. Um, so they were there uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. They left Thursday. They came back Friday. Uh, they came in and wanted somebody to paint the dome. I really didn't have much to do with that. Uh, I don't really know why they painted a gray cement dome gray, but uh, that, that's something that they wanted to do. I never really, the boulder thing, I never really wanted it to be a boulder necessarily. But uh, it does look a little, doesn't look like a nice pretty dome. But uh, um, it was it was pretty interesting. Uh, David is in a, uh, David Mays, the guy with the, with the Parrot AR drones, um, he said he put his dome together too, and they just showed a real quick picture of his, and it looked pretty neat. I don't know what you had as a covering, but he said he took him about two hours to, to build, but he did it by himself. Um, so... You know, if it, if I had to do it by myself, it probably would have took three or four hours. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but you know, as he said, he did what he had to do, and and and, and he used the ladder and, and and got his built pretty quickly. Was yours uh was yours uh, uh PVC or what was your struts made out of, David? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, It looked like, and he said, you know, David Mays, he came up, he said that he had a 16-foot dome, too, which is which is what mine was. Um, but all I saw was that one little picture of it. I'm sorry, it's hard for me to multitask. Uh, yeah, he David was responding that uh, uh, you know that that uh, he was glad it wasn't my idea to paint the thing gray. The guy uh, called me and I and he came out and looked and I showed him some rocks. So there's a lot of iron uh, there at my bug out location, and uh, you know I said if you're gonna paint it, paint it brown and, and red and stuff. But uh, he wanted to do it to do it gray. Um, so, but uh, I, I really like those geodesic domes. We're later going to uh, to build three in a in a in a log, you know, connected in a long form, and use one uh, as a chicken rabbit chicken coop rabbit hutch. Uh, one is a greenhouse, and the one is aquaponics. Uh, something that we're wanting to try to maybe mess with a little bit. Uh, oh, David bought his from Turtle Tough Shelters. Which is pretty cool. There's another guy in Tennessee that makes PVC domes, um, and he cuts everything. A pretty pretty cool idea, um, and I, I probably would steal that idea and, and try it myself. But uh, the guy is uh, he's got a patent on it, and it's, it's a pretty good idea. The way he does his PVC domes, he's out uh, in the uh, Cumberland Plateau. But yeah, mine was metal, and I got the idea from some Burning Man folks. A lot of uh, a lot of online sites about geodesic domes are people who take them out to Burning Man. But uh, I did that, and then I just added the feral cement, you know, the chicken wire and cement, which in first world countries like America, uh, we typically use feral cement to make uh, boats, barges, you know. Uh, people do build their own boats with feral cement. But in third world countries, they use it to make a lot of water tanks or even houses. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, but so my idea was, you know, I, there's a couple books on feral cement, a lot of good books out there, but they're all on building like water cisterns and water tanks or swimming pools, and uh, there wasn't anything on building buildings. But the thing, but feral cement is so strong and it's so cheap, and it is so, um, it's it's not technological. I'd never worked cement before, and I think our dome turned out pretty well. Um, so. I think anybody could figure it out, even though it is a little more labor intensive. Um, okay, yeah, David said he put a, a tank camp cover over his dome. 
which looked pretty cool. Uh, a tank cover to make it camouflage. I, yeah, I would like to to see that dome up in person sometime. That that looked pretty cool. Um, no, he says he's got a video on his prep.com website showing how he did it. I'm going to have to look at that. Um, actually, David, what I'm thinking about doing, uh, and we probably can't do it on Google Hangouts because apparently I'm ignorant in how to get people on here to talk, but uh, I want to get, and I talked to uh, Subtac out in Smyrna. I'd like to get all the Tennessee Doomsday Prepper guys together. I don't know at my property or somewhere else, and us just do a big, you know, cookout you know, hang out, you know, put it on video, sort of a collaboration so we can all sort of talk. You know, all in all, I'm pretty happy about how the Doomsday Prepper episode aired. I was really afraid they'd make us look crazy and, and the stress of trying to get, you know, a week's worth of stuff done with three guys. Um, you know, there, there was a little bit of angry words exchanged there a little bit uh, toward the end. But, uh, um, you know, especially when I got stabbed in the hand, that was, that was not cool. But uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't choose to paint it gray. Um, we did not. Dad wasn't actually in the building when we hit it with the Tannerite. Um, but that was really the the two uh, fake things that we did for TV. Uh, everything else is pretty much stuff that that we've done. Um, but uh, yeah, the, a friend of mine that does uh, aerial photography stuff, he was going to get a parent drone. I think that's what your first drone was, the one that you put your aluminum foil on. Um, but he ended up buying the same one that you had that uh, was able to drop the uh, the first aid kit. Uh, and he uses that commercially to, well, not commercially because you can't do drones commercially, but he'll take pictures of people's, you know, property and stuff for them. Um, but, uh, you know, I've always wanted to do that too, but, you know, they're a little more expensive and, and the wife got me on a budget. Of what I could do, uh, but yeah, uh, I was I was pretty upset, and I think most Doomsday Prepper people are upset that they're going to be made to look crazy. You know, when we signed the uh, the waivers where we could film, um, I didn't let them show like my food storage. Um, didn't have them look at the animals, the rabbits, the chickens. Um, you know, they came up, took a shot of the front of the house, but they didn't show the bees. I, I really didn't, you know, I didn't mind them telling what my name is because I'm out on YouTube and Internet anyway. Um, and anybody with any technological knowledge can look up where I live, which I don't like that, but it is what it is. But my bug out location, they didn't even, it's not even the same town. It's not even the same county. It's where the dome is built is actually about an hour and a half away from where we live. Um, and eventually that'll be known too, but it'll be known after we live down there, uh, because we're we're building a gun range at, at the at the time. As a matter of fact, we're working right now to get the process of being simunitions uh, certified, so we can do simunitions uh, courses down there. But uh, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to see your uh, your parrot drone. Um, Yeah, okay, the Phantom 2 is a better aerial photography thing than the Parrot. Um, and I guess the Parrot's like 400 bucks. I don't know what the, um, I don't know what the, uh, the Phantom 2 that you got is, is but, uh, you know, like I said, my friend's got one too, and, and he really likes it. Oh, hey, BC Truck. Um, that's another guy that I follow on YouTube a lot, BC Truck. He, he does, he's got a lot of cool projects also. I figure it wouldn't be long before they ask him to, to be on the show too. Apparently, a lot of folks don't want to be on the show. You know, real preppers don't want to be on the show because as I was looking on the Facebook, there were a lot of not-so-nice comments, you know, um, and, you know, that kind of rolls off my back. I, I'm sort of used to it. You know, I know that I'm overweight, and I know that uh, um, the things in my head don't always come out of my mouth properly, um, but it's, it's kind of got the wife tore up, you know, uh, people saying ugly stuff. But, uh, 
a lot of folks don't want to be on the show because they think it's pejorative. But you know, I guess if you're sort of careful, and there were a lot of times they asked me questions, and I just said, "Hey, I'm not going to answer that," or "Hey, I'm not going to." You know, they kept saying, "How many rounds do you have? How many bullets do you have? How many, you know, how many guns do you have?" And I'm like, "I've got more than two. You know, I've got one for each hand. Uh, you know, say I've got probably more than I need, uh, but I am a firearm instructor, and so you know, I do use them." Uh, you know, in business. So, you know, uh, I, I never would give them a straight answer, and so I, I think they didn't show that. But, uh, you know, we didn't want to show them, you know, that, that's the big thing. A lot of people, you know, operational security, they don't want people to know where they're at. And and I think operational security is a great, um, a great thing. And to tell you the truth, had I done it a little different, uh, I probably would not, you know, have been on the show, but uh, I figure since I started the website to teach people about firearms, to, to do my firearm business, and then the prepping stuff was something that I did personally, and then I added to the website to just sort of to share with other folks. People already knew what my name was. People already know where I'm at. So, you know, it's already out there. I can't take it back. So I didn't, I figure, feel like my best thing is, you know, keep driving teach as many people and then maybe there'll be less folks wanting to come take my stuff but uh, I didn't I didn't show them where my where my land was but uh, you know the problem is you know as I sort of said on the show and it didn't fully air but you know my wife's a special ed teacher I work for state government you know and we both chose jobs that fulfill us let, lets us feel like we're helping the community you know people you know whole uh, but it doesn't really pay us very much so a lot of the guys on Doomsday Preppers, they have uh, jobs that fulfill them more financially, uh, and they're able to afford things that, that we can't afford, and, and you know that's that's great. Um, you do have to have resources, but uh, we have to be a little smarter and uh, uh, prioritize a little more than, than some other folks, which that's kind of been it's kind of been a problem. Uh, I think with Doomsday Preppers is that it shows, you know, people that, that spend, you know, some of these guys go down and they order two pallets worth of food at a time, you know, freeze-dried stuff, and, you know, I can't really afford to uh, to do that. Uh, so we have to, you know, we have to uh, uh, figure out how to do stuff ourselves, and that, you know, that means some of our stuff is a little jury-rigged. You know, as you as you looked on the episode and you saw us doing the steam engine, a lot of comments about my dirty stove. Uh, Wise really talked about that. It, our stove isn't dirty. I caught it on fire. All those black marks are melted melted knobs. Uh, we we've been redoing the kitchen, but we have to redo the kitchen as I give a gun class, and then I'll get new cabinets or do a kid, do, you know, do a do a uh, a gun class, and then get a new refrigerator. But I about burned the whole house down uh, last year. You know, wife left to go to school. First day that I was left alone with the baby, I was making fried homemade uh, corn nachos, tortilla chips, and uh, went to go chase the baby and got playing with the baby, and then I smelled smoke. And uh, instead of going in and putting the fire out, I took the baby outside. <laughs> By the time I got in, basically my whole cabinet was fully engulfed, and uh, I burned myself pretty good putting the fire out and uh, just haven't been able to totally uh, repair everything. But uh, uh, what I need to do is figure out how to work this thing so that uh, people can get on here and talk too. Because I used to podcast, but I really wanted to get into the videos. Uh, I wanted to get into the videos, but... Uh, uh, I thought it would just automatically pop up here at the bottom, but it is not. And my plan was, if this went pretty good, to, to start doing this on a more regular basis. Okay, go, yeah, all right. Yeah, your camera with the uh, GoPro and everything, about $1,500, $2,000 to, to get. That makes sense, because I got a GoPro there. You know, the good ones are about $400 themselves. Paired is useless. It's a. Uh, 
But anyway, um, yeah, Dad and I fought a little bit. I got stabbed in the hand. Um, we weren't really ready for the for the for the episode. We weren't really ready for the build. I have no infrastructure out there on the property. It's just 15 acres of raw land, um, and it's got some roads. And sometimes the roads are even passable. So, uh, um, you know, we, we broke my truck in the process of getting everything down. So a lot of the things that we, that we hauled out there tools-wise was in the back of my cube, which isn't always the best. But, uh, uh, you know, there is a little bit, you know, a lot of the stuff that they said was, was sort of taken out of context. Or we said something over here and they added it over there. And it didn't really take away, I guess, from the totality of what we were talking about. But, uh, you know. Um, I guess it did make it a little more enjoyable to watch. But, uh, yeah, I was really upset to see. I was hoping they would edit out my cement mixing uh, uh, fiasco, and they were supposed to talk more about the uh, mortar sprayers because, as I said, uh, we sprayed all the cement, just me and my dad, uh, in one day. Um, that whole dome was sprayed in one day. Um, and my cement mixer, my Harbor Freight cement mixer broke. It just went through. So most of that was hand mixed and, and uh, just the two of us. And uh, uh, without that sprayer, we wouldn't have got done. And we, we ended up doing it all Thursday. Thursday we came in and we finished wiring the chicken wire up. We sprayed the whole dome, let it dry. They came back Friday. They painted it Friday morning. We shot the Tannerite off. You know, shot some video of me with the gun and, you know, me, whatever. And then we went to the house and spent about six hours at the house uh, filming the baby and filming. We did a lot of filming in my library because, to me, the biggest prep that I have is is knowledge and the resources that I have in these books. But, uh, you know, you can read all you want, but uh, uh, that doesn't necessarily make you can do it. You know, I've read several books on ferrocement, cement, but... First time I tried to use a mixer, I, I jacked it up. Uh, it's like the Marauder guy. You know, he's read some books on, uh, on uh, C-sections, but I really hope that he never actually tries to do that based upon what he's read in a book. Um, but uh, um, all in all, it's, you know, I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good uh, a show, and uh, I was pretty happy with it. Um, you know, I just I just wish I had more time on the mixer. I think this summer we're going to come back and, and finish. We're going to put a cement floor in it. But it never was designed to be a bunker, and it was never designed to be hidden. As I said, uh, uh, it was designed to be a place to keep my camping gear uh, until the, the land gets built up, and then it's going to be a classroom. Uh, as you stand at the door off to the left, uh, another 50 feet away, that's, that's where the firing line is going to be for the range. Uh, and... If you're standing at the door behind you is where we're going to put some outhouses there. Uh, and then that area in front of the dome is going to be a parking lot. You know, so that's going to be our classroom for our carry permits and security guard stuff. Because that's what we're going to do first uh, as we build up and, and turn it into a working homestead. Um, we're going to put some, some livestock out there. I've got some deals with some of the neighbors, the local neighbors, where... Uh, I'm going to purchase the animals, and then we're going to share. You know, they're going to raise them for me um, because you can't put animals out and then not be there. Uh, they're going to raise them, and then we're going to split them. And then you know, do the the greenhouses and the gardens and the you know all the normal stuff that you should do because uh, you know you can't buy everything. If you're a prepper and you want to buy everything, um, eventually um, you're going to run out of money. Or if the stores are there, if you don't have some sort of method of resupply, you won't have anything to be able to go buy. So we plan on trying to grow most of our own food and uh, teach people how to do the stuff that, that we know how to do. And as we grow our skills, maybe host workshops for other people to come in. You know, the, the uh, uh, essential oils. My dad is a, is a licensed massage therapist, and he does a lot with essential oils. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in um, natural medicine. You know, there, there's some things that you need antibiotics and, and, you know, pharmacology for, but those that treat symptoms, you know, there's a lot of other things that natural remedies uh, are better, right? But I don't know anything about that, so I would love to have somebody come out 
and uh, uh, talk about it. You know, no, I can't. I can't see Eric either. I, I don't know what the deal is. Um, oh, William. Hey, William. This is a buddy of mine. He uh, he's actually the guy let me borrow the generator uh, because all my generators are, are homemade, uh, not construction grade. But William said, "How do I manage uh, condensation in the shelter? Uh, windows help, but but uh, uh, is it a concern?" Yeah, uh, yes, condensation is an issue. There were some people who said uh, they don't see any smokestacks. Uh, we didn't have time when we were doing it, but I've got a whirly bird uh, that we're going to come in and put in the center of the dome at the top to help with condensation. I have noticed going out to the dome there that there, there is a little wet on the inside. We are having some condensation issues, uh, but we're going to put that whirly, derm, whirly bird up in there. But along the back wall, we're going to put in a masonry rocket stove, a uh, uh, mass heater. Uh, so we're going, to do, we're going to do that. But yeah, I, I would love to do an essential oils class. You know, really, nobody knows everything, and the more people you know, the better. And so when you find somebody who knows something more than you, you know, have, you know get them to come in and teach, I, I think that's the best thing to do. Right now, I've got to build my classroom. Uh, right now when I teach classes I either go out and, and talk at a group or I do uh, at my range. I, I run a range up in Gallatin when I, when I shoot. But uh, uh, condensation is an issue. Like I said we're going to put an air vent in there and we're going to put a masonry heater in there. Right now I just keep the door open. You know there's nothing in it for anybody to steal. Uh, I've got a wheelbarrow down there and a couple shovels. You know, um, And then you know a whole bunch of pile of sand. Um, but eventually, you know, um, when it turns into a classroom, we are going to have to have some ventilation built in. Um, be all savvy. To, I've actually been to that website uh, when I was first looking looking you up. Um, but yeah, be all savvy dot com uh, does does essential little stuff. I was actually, have you ever seen, there was a guy, he, um, he's he got an a old distiller. I've got a couple of distillers for water. Uh, I've been sort of researching essential oil distilling, knowing that it takes lots and lots of plant matter to get just a little bit of essential oils. You know, you get hydrosol, you know, you know, you get a lot of that because it's just, you know, oil that, that's flavored, I guess. But, uh, you know, I've been looking into uh, essential oil distilling. There's a guy that's got one in for microwaves. It's like $150. Uh, I emailed him to try to, to uh, see about purchasing one so I could try it out, but he hasn't emailed me back. Um, but uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to figure out how to get David on here uh, live because he's got a heck of a lot of, lot of good comments. Um, and I can't really keep up with them. They're 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 coming in quicker than uh, than, than I could I could see them. But uh, uh, like I said, nobody knows everything. And there's a whole bunch of people here in Tennessee, whole bunch of good. There's Middle Tennessee preppers. There's a whole bunch of really good guys out there uh, that give classes or that know what they're talking about. Um, and I, and I just think that we probably need to to uh, get together more often. And, uh, and and collaborate and communicate, you know. Um, I see Dustin's on there too. Hey, Dustin. Yeah, I feel real bad. I feel like I'm just sort of uh, mumbling over here. I really wanted to get a bunch of people on, and I invited a bunch of people, and it looks like they're all viewing. I just can't figure out how to add them. You know.
I'm over here pressing all the buttons. And it says Hangout, so I don't know. I don't know why it's not letting me add people. I really don't. But uh, yeah, two thousand pounds of peppermint leaf to provide one liter of essential oils. It's not easy to replicate that. That's that's absolutely true. Um, but in my beekeeping, I use a lot of essential oils. I use the I'm, I try to beekeep organically, and so use a lot of like lemongrass oil, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, different different types of oils, um, and it would be nice to be able to uh, to do that. But when I buy them, I buy little bitty tiny jars, um, so I think I could probably distill. You know, if I had a couple hundred pounds, I might get you know a fraction of an ounce, and that might actually be enough to do what what I need to do. Um, not easy to replicate. Absolutely, but um, I would like to um, try it at least once. You know, you do it the first time, you're a, you're a scientist. You do it the second time, you're an engineer. You do it the third time, you're a technician. You know, I, I like coming up with these, these things and just seeing if I can do them. You know, knowing that I will never be able to do them at the level of somebody that does this all the time, full time, um, or, or have a great level of efficiencies. But I figure if, you know, I got the book, the book's not enough. We know reading the thing ain't, ain't the same as doing it. But if I go out and I try it and I get it done and I do it um, and, and it's successful, then I have a good starting spot. And if there actually was, and I really don't necessarily think we're ever going to have a grid down total come catastrophic into the world as we know it collapse. I do think it's possible. But... Uh, you know, if we had, if we did have an actual, say, New Madrid caused cascading failures, caused the nuclear power plant to shut down, you know, you know, and that caused us to, to, you know, run out of money and have an economic collapse or whatever. You know, not one big accident, but one caused another, caused another, caused another. Then labor and inefficiencies would be secondary to the ability to actually do it. So maybe I can't grow a thousand pounds of peppermint leaf to make one liter of essential oil, but maybe there'll be a couple people in the community who could do it. If I know how to do it and I have the tools, maybe we can work together. Um, but, uh, you know, like, like I said, there's, from my research, there's several different ways of making essential oils. And, and as you said, David, the chemistry is different depending on where they come from. Um, but, uh, I think the guy that, that does it in the microwave is, is something cool to try, mm -hmm. at least. You know, I, I grow a lot of mint, um, try to do a little uh, medicinal herbs in the, in the uh, raised bed gardens. It would be cool to be able to, uh, to get some peppermint oil out of the leaves that I grow because I take that peppermint oil, mix it with my beeswax, and then make, like, lip balm. So it would be really cool to not only you know, create the wax from the bees that I raise, but actually create the peppermint, the flavorings. You know, then I, w I could be able to make peppermint, you know, lip balm without having to spend any money. Everything is stuff that I've grown. And I think that would be cool to try. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, I've been sitting here talking for 40 minutes and can't really, uh, can't really, get anybody else on here, which was not my intent. So apparently my uh, uh, research into how to work a Google Hangouts was it was not adequate for the task. I, uh, I thought if I just invited people, they would be able to, to pop up because it says add people to this video call, and it's not letting me do so. So uh, uh, I think what I'm going to do is sign off in a couple minutes, and then uh, we might have to do this again. I, I definitely, uh, David, we're going to have to schedule a time where, you know, I just go down to Jackson and we just meet up. Uh, you know, talk, you talk about essential oils on, on my YouTube channel, and maybe, you know, we can, we can work out some sort of collaboration. But as I've said, I've been trying to talk to all the other Tennessee Doomsday Prepper guys. I'd really like us to all do something together. 
maybe go out to a range or, or something. I, I, I don't know. So if you know anybody else, um, you know, that was on the show that's from, from, from Tennessee, you know, you know, be happy to, to have you help sort one, sort that out, you know, and make that happen. But anyway, um, let me just see right quick if there's any other questions that I missed. No. Yeah. Do I provide advanced pistol classes? I do. I, uh, um, very little as far as pistols that I don't teach. I do, uh, I just turned in my carry permit instructor because I'm building the range and, and I uh, I didn't like competing in Nashville because I'm also an instructor trainer. So every time I do an instructor class, I'm making a whole bunch more guys in Nashville to teach carry permits. And, and you know, frankly, I just got tired of competing. Um, uh, I, do, I do better doing instructor classes. But when I build the range, I'm going to do carry permits again. But I do armed security. I do instructor stuff. As I said, I'm, I'm actually... Uh, just waiting my uh, class date to do simunitions. I'm going to start doing uh, uh, simunition scenario classes. So uh, we could do a lot of a lot of uh, uh, you know advanced pistol, and that would be really awesome to do a, a pistol shooting emergency first aid class. A uh, big pet peeve of mine is you know you go a lot of places to learn how to shoot. Not a lot of people teach you either when to shoot, which is where the simunitions comes in. You know to teach that scenario based reality based training and then what to do after a shooting you know basically you got to go up to LFI you know uh, uh, to get a class on what to do after a shooting and it would be really cool because as I as I tell my students you know uh, once you make sure you're okay and you've dealt with you know the, the, the life safety issues if you can start performing first aid on the victims of a shooting and maybe and, and this isn't the place to, to talk about this taking a little bit out of context but even maybe the bad guy that attacked you if you could do it safety safely if you could do a little first aid on him it goes a long way to, to show that you're a reasonable human that cares about human life and that you did what you did to protect yourself and others uh, but yeah uh, that would be that would be fun that would be awesome uh, to do that but uh, I think you're absolutely right, David. It does take real preppers that aren't crazy to uh, to help show how positive uh, prepping can be. I, you know, as I look at the Doomsday Prepper Facebook page and look at the comments, looks like the vast majority of people that watch the show want to see preppers in a positive light. They want to watch the show and learn something. So it really kills me that when you do something, you know, they they cut it down into little bitty bits and don't show you how to do anything. You know, it's like Doomsday Castle. I wanted to see him build the castle, you know, watched all season long for, for them to put the, the roof on like the last episode, right? Um, you know, I do uh, I do share the same concerns as, as you do. I know my wife was very concerned, just like you said yours was, about not wanting to be on the show, not wanting to be crazy. You know, the two or three trolls that... Uh, got on there and said, you know, you're fat, you need to do cardio, and you, they're absolutely right, but uh, nobody's perfect and nobody can do everything, and that's something that I know is a weakness, you know, you know, that's got her, that's got her torque, she doesn't, she doesn't see the 50 other people that made positive comments, uh, but yeah, you know, I think, I think as a whole, the show was great, I, I think that it, it, it did not show either me or David uh, maze in, in, a, in a negative light you know I was I was kind of afraid of that um, but I, I, I think that uh, I think that, that there's a lot to be said for for the show I think that they're starting maybe to get a little bit and they're getting to show more and more um, positive project sides even though then they screw it up every once in a while and have a marauder on there or they show somebody water more than somebody on there so uh, you know uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. It just seems like somebody, somewhere, somebody ought to do a show that actually, sh you know, like the Woodwright shop, you know, where they come in and they actually build something and show you how and show you why and show all the positive aspects of prepping. So anyway, uh, with that being said, I want to figure out how to do this where people can get online and, and talk to. I know it can be done. I've participated in them, but I've never actually ran one. So I'm going to figure that out, and I'm going to redo this again later, and and get 
get guys on here that are experts and stuff. You know, get Dave to come in and talk about, you know, essential oils or, or, or whatever. So, anyway, I appreciate it, guys. And uh, until next time, you can always check us out on uh, YouTube.tngun or tngun.com. Thanks.